This is Jason. We're off the hook. This is amazing. Babe, we are going to be trying to make love all night long. During his life on Earth, he did a lot of questionable things. Can you really blame him? Portals! His dad's name is Donkey Doug. This is Donkey Doug. I don't think of him as my son. I think of him as my boy! Needless to say, Jason wasn't the best person on Earth. Although misguided, he always had a dreamer's heart and a creative mind. Until one day, his creativity for criminal activity got him into this mess. And he wound up here. He's dead. And he's not really in the good place, but you know that. Jason doesn't know that, though. He wakes up to find Michael, who tells him this. I know you were a Buddhist monk and kept a vow of silence. Would you prefer to remain silent here as well? And keeping his mouth shut is not Jason's strong suit. Needing a friend in this new forked up situation, Jason slides a note to Eleanor. They share the same secret. I don't know how I got here. I have no idea what's going on and I am freaking out, homie. While Eleanor tries to survive long enough to earn her place in the afterlife, she urges Jason to shut the fork up and continue to be Jianyu. To cope with the new personality change, he seeks a friend in Janet, who helps him set up a private space away from Tahani that he calls his... Buttle. What? As he struggles to contain the awesome Floridaness within, Jason becomes more and more miserable as Jianyu. After a shirt show of a dinner event that nearly exposed Jason and Eleanor's real identities, be quiet and eat your white sponge, Jason agrees to take Chidi's ethics lessons. I am here to learn about ethnics. Although he's not 100% clear on what they are. Pretty sure it's ethnics. While Jason struggles to coexist with Tahani, he continues to rely on the smarts of his only allies in the neighborhood. Truthfully, though, he probably only understands about 30% of what's happening. There's so much thoughts in my brain, it's like my head is filled with rocks. You should, you should listen to me. I came up with hundreds of plans in my life, and only one of them got me killed. But Jason can't be completely written off as... Literally the dumbest person I've ever met. And who am I? Describe me now because he's learning. Well done. Thanks. When Janet's rebooted, and Jason gets found out by Tahani, Jason and Janet will find friendship in their trying times. But it could never go beyond friendship. After all, Janet isn't human. I love you. OK. Oh, all right. Never mind. Jason married a robot. That's enough out of you, robot lover. Hey, that's racist. It's not a robot. They may not be man and wife, but they're married and they love each other. When they profess their love to Michael, they also out G on you as Jason. I wasn't a failed DJ. I was pre-successful. Wanting to protect their burgeoning marriage, Jason and Janet escape to the medium place with an ethically confused Eleanor. But when their friends' souls appear to be in peril, Jason eventually agrees to return to the neighborhood, proving he has the capacity to grow. Chidi! Tahani! We're back to save your souls! I mean, he did try to blow up the train first, but he's Jason. He'll always chuck a Molotov cocktail when faced with a problem. Am I right? After Eleanor figures out they're in the bad place, Jason and the rest of them are rebooted. But despite Michael's best efforts to torture them, they keep figuring everything out. Jason even gets one. I think we're in the bad place. Jason figured it out? Yeah, this one hurts. Ow. And when Michael is at his wit's end, it's actually Jason who gives him the idea to team up with the humans with a promise to get them to the real good place. What? Why? You do? What? With the memory of his marriage to Janet wiped, <gasps> he turns his affections to Tahani, and they strike up a very sexy situation, and even start to get married. But the wedding is stopped to prevent Janet from further glitching, because she's still in love with Jason. And when things get more complicated, after Michael reveals he doesn't know how to get to the good place, Tahani decides it's best to end their fling, opening the door for Janet and Jason to reignite their romance. But first, Jason has to prove, along with the rest of the humans, that he can become a better person on Earth. With a little help from Michael, he'll be reunited with Team Cockroach in the hopes of finding meaning for his life. But after a year of studying, Jason and the Brainy Bunch are exposed to the door to the afterlife, barring them from any meaningful improvement and ruining their chances of getting into the good place. That's my birthday. 
With the Brainy Bunch's new mission to save the souls of their loved ones, Jason flies to Florida to pay a visit to... Donkey Duck! But after Jason realizes his dad is a lost cause, he focuses his attention on saving Pillboy. And Jason sets him on a path that will ensure he stays out of trouble and on his way to earning enough points to getting into the good place. It also means they have to say goodbye. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. Take worse, bro. After a brawl with some demons. 2,000 points! Discovering he and Janet used to be married. Oh, married? Oh. And escaping to the mailroom of the good place, Jason starts to fall for Janet again. Do you want to try being boyfriend girlfriend? Yes, I'd very much like to go on a date with you somewhere sometime. Oh, and he low-key saves everyone's souls when he recounts this story to Judge Jen. I never yelled at Big Noodle for being late after that because I knew how hard it was for him to be there. Sparking the idea to reboot the neighborhood. But when they all come back to the medium place, Jason finds a more sophisticated Derek relatively speaking, of course. <laughs> and Jason's jealousy really starts to ramp up when Janet and Derek pool their resources to make people for the new neighborhood. This is purely professional, okay? Now be a pal and hold my classy martini while I get down to business. But for now, there's bigger problems in the neighborhood. Hopefully, by the end of the experiment, the Soul Squad will prove that humans can improve after death, and Jason and Janet will be together for the rest of eternity, trying to figure out just how to have sex.